Well, he's still at it. We now have a channel called Cool Dude Clem Sucks. But you know what? If you think that's gonna get me mad, well, think again, because on the contrary, I think that's quite funny. And it's more fame for me. Anyway, let's get on with today's featured video. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I am Cool Dude Clem, and this is my high wattage power supply. It cost £400,000 to power this device for 12 seconds. Alright, seriously though, this is the high wattage power supply that I'm working on. I don't know in a previous video on YouTube I th um, mentioned this. Well, I have made a few changes. So, I'm going to go through the entire thing again. Just for those of you who may have forgotten how it works or uh, haven't seen that video. So, let's uh, take the tour of this thing. Firstly, we have two microwave oven transformers, although only one of them is actually used to provide power, which is this one right here. It has a custom secondary on it. Some people may think this wire is a little bit thin, but it's actually doubled up, as you can see on the end here. Not one piece of wire, but two pieces of wire. And this little transformer here is connected to these two relays, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So anyway, when we turn this on, Better be careful here because I well, still need to insulate all the mains on this. But power flows into this transformer, which is used the, as the ballast. Then it goes into this one, then into this resistor, then into this rectifier, which charges these capacitors. And when I press this switch, these two relays click on. This one shorts out this resistor so we get the full output from the transformer going into the rectifier and the capacitors. I've done it that way so we have a soft start so when I turn it on it's not just going to instantly slam all that power into the capacitors because that could be bad. could also blow up my rectifier which I don't really want. So anyway after about two seconds of turning this on then I can press this button to make it give output. Like I said this relay shorts this resistor out so we get the full output from the transformer now because I'll be safe to do that once the capacitors are charged. And this relay connects the output of the power supply to whatever it is I happen to be powering and that's pretty much it really. Of course this transformer is what powers the relays. Just got a single phase, I mean half wave rectifier on there, don't really need anything more than that. And yes it works pretty good. And over here is what I'm powering. ZVS flyback driver. And I do get quite a considerable output from this. So, I'm going to turn it on and let's see what kind of arcs we can draw from the ZVS, from the ZVS, when it's being powered off this monster. Now, I do have this on a circuit breaker as well, for those of you concerned about that. So, let's turn it on. You might be able to hear a transformer buzzing. It's this transformer, actually. It doesn't bother me. Just like Cool Dude Clem sucks. So the, oh, god damn it! Someone at the door now. Sorry about that. Right, let's try again. Power on. Transformer is buzzing happily away. Let's let's draw some art. It wouldn't be Call Dude Clem's electronic workshop without something like this. Computer doesn't like that. Don't know if you can hear that. I'll just turn the volume up a little bit. That's not doing it now. Yeah, let's just have one more. I cannot run this for too long because this primary does get pretty warm. Yeah, that's quite warm. Actually, that could have run for a little longer. Just 
making sure everything is discharged. But you know what? I think we can make this even more powerful. So what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to put a switch across the primary of this transformer which as you remember I'm using as a ballast so I can switch this in and out of the circuit so instead of the mains going into this and then into this it will just go directly into this and then we'll have all the power available from that transformer which is a little bit worrying actually because when I measure the voltage of this power supply when it's unloaded as I'm going to do right now um, it would help if I had the meter turned on to the volts setting. We have about 38 volts there. And these capacitors are only rated for 35 volts. But when I have the ZVS connected, it pulls the voltage down to about 34 volts. And when I'm drawing an arc, it pulls the voltage down to about 25. So I think... Before I add any kind of unballasting to this, I'm just going to have to take a few windings off this secondary to get it down to 35 volts so we don't blow the capacitors. So, I have now added a switch right there so I can take this transformer out of the circuit. And it is in the position where this transformer takes out is out of the circuit, so... It's all just going to go straight into this transformer. The problem that I really have a real gripe against using these microwave oven transformers is, if we look on this meter, I've got this measuring the current going into the transformer. There's nothing connected on the other end, as you can see, it's just... I have disconnected that. But if we take a look at the current that this transformer is taking in, that's quite a bit. 3.6 amps directly from the mains. And if we do the math, or the maths, 3.6 amps times 240 volts, which is what we use here, you can see that the transformer, when it's idle, is wasting a whopping 864 watts. It's madness. And that's why I don't usually like to run these things unballasted. Anyway, rant over, let's see what voltage we get from this, because I've got the meter connected right there, which is... Let's just put this up so we can actually see what the numbers are. Okay, it's still not very good, is it? You can still see, got the spindle of the record player in the way, but I'm sure you're going to make it out. So let's turn it on and see what voltage we get. Okay, well, we got about 26 volts out of that. So I'm going to take off one turn at a time to get the voltage down to 25 volts. Then we'll connect it up and we'll see what we get out of this. Okay, I've taken some windings off, so the voltage is much lower now. As you can see, it's, well, a bit lower. We've got 24.6 volts. And I'm not going to put any more than that into the rectifier. Well, that rectifier could probably take about 100 volts before it blows, but, of course, these capacitors. you got to remember, when you rectify AC to DC, you're dealing with 1.4 times the voltage that you normally have with the AC. So let's see what voltage this power supply gives us. Better put my meter onto DC volts. First we're going to try it with the ballast in, and then we'll try it with the ballast out. Alright, with the ballast connected we have 35 volts, now with the ballast out, 35.8. Not much of a change there, but now it's time for the feature of this video. Gonna connect this unballasted to the ZVS or ZVS flyback driver. Well, let's draw some arcs. Now, I have absolutely no idea what this is going to do. Best case, we're gonna get some really good arcs out of this, 
Worst case from tumours, which hopefully Aperture Science will cut out. I've turned the computer off and moved all sensitive equipment as far away from this thing as possible. Apart from the camera, of course. And I'm just doing this to build up suspense. This is what we get. Running it ballasted. And this is what we get. With no ballast. And I think we could go for another run. Turn the fan off so it shouldn't be blowing the arc about. So there we go, better just discharge this thing. And finally, for all the geeks and nerds out there, including myself, let's just see what the current and voltage is when we're drawing arcs. Okay, drawing a big arc. We had about nine, almost nine amps there. about 8.7 amps at the most. And now the voltage. This is idle. About 33 volts. Playing it up. Hmm, that's a bit of a disappointing voltage drop. But not too bad, I guess. As always, must discharge. And unplug. So, once again, let's do the maths and find out what the wattage is. We had about 27 volts at maximum arc distance. Let's multiply that by the current, which is about 8.7 amps, and we get. 234, almost 235 watts. Probably get even more with better transformers. Anyway, in the future in this thing, what I want to do is, because it's got quite a bit of space here, I want to mount a couple of control boards, well, a couple of oscillator boards, one with a 555 timer and one with a with that high-frequency driver. And this way, I've got a perfect power supply for things like Tesla coils and singing arcs and all kinds of things. So I'm going to try that in the future. I just need to get another terminal strip so I can connect all the outputs to it. And then, well, I don't know. Okay, just before I go, I thought I'd show you a little thing I've done. Now, you might notice, well, might have noticed that the video quality is good, just like it used to be. High definition and good colors and everything. Well, that's because I'm now using my high-definition camera again. I wasn't using this for the previous lot of videos because... <coughs> the battery is crap. It no longer holds a charge anymore. So, what I've gone and done... We can, we can see in here... I've connected a cable where the battery is connected. The strange thing is, although you can clearly see that there are three terminals there, I only have two con two terminals connected, the positive and negative battery connections, and they go down to this power supply here, and that seems to power the camera just fine. It doesn't complain about there not being a real battery in there. Along here I've had to put a, a diode in series with the power supply, not because it gives out AC or anything like that, but this power supply gives out about 4.8 volts. I think it's supposed to be 5 volts, but you know, that's close enough. 
So I decided to put a couple of diodes in to drop the voltage down. And uh, my camera is my computer's doing something really weird with the recording. I don't know what's going on there. Two diodes drop the voltage too much, but a single diode seems to do the trick just fine. And uh, I forgot to plug it in. That's uh, rather stupid of me. So I can turn this on. And as you can see, it works absolutely fine. Even though I'm powering it in a way that it wasn't intended to be powered with. I would have changed the output of this power supply, but it's one of those ones that uses a Zener diode to regulate the voltage. And since I don't have any Zener diodes at the voltage that I need, well, that's why I did it that way. Right, let's just turn this off now because I'm just wasting it. Well, I'm not really wasting anything, but I'm going to turn it off anyway. So, yeah, that's about it for this video, and I'll see you next time. And until next time, goodbye. Now, I've got to stop this thing recording if I can just remember how to do that.